All but two Republicans in the House of Representatives went on record saying it's okay to openly encourage the assassination of one of your fellow members of Congress, particularly, apparently, if they're a member of Congress who is also a person of color. And that part about Representative Ocasio-Cortez not being white and being the victim of Paul Gosar's uh, little video, I think it's really the core of the issue. Uh, because Republicans are now openly referring to her and the women of color who call themselves the squad as the so-called jihad caucus, as in Muslim terrorists, as in the other. Earlier in the day, the uh, infamous anti-Semite and racist represented Marjorie Taylor Greene called on her followers to prepare for war because, quote, Joe Biden didn't win the 2020 election end quote, and quote, the only way you get freedom back after you've lost it is with the price of blood, end quote. You know, we've heard this kind of rhetoric before. We heard it leading up to the Civil War. Stonewall Jackson, in March of 1861, gave a speech to the Virginia Military Institute. He said, the time for war has not yet come, but it will come, and that soon. And when it does come, my advice is to draw the sword and throw away the scabbard. And sure enough, Within a matter of months, Americans were killing other Americans. You know, Jackson and his ilk frequently try to pretend that the Civil War wasn't about maintaining the right of white people to enslave black people and others. Uh, but, you know, their, their proclamations of secession kind of betray them. They come right out and say it. No matter how much Republicans and even some white Democrats want to try to pretend that the major difference between the Democratic and Republican Party the major difference, by the way, that the Republican Party is selling to the American people, no matter how much they try to pretend it's not race, it is. It's race. And that's only a small part of a much larger racial political strategy that the Republican Party has been all about since the 1960s. You know, there was a time in America when straight white people lived in nice, comfortable white bubbles. I grew up in one in, in the 1950s. The most, you know, in quotes, exotic people that I knew in my neighborhood were Jewish. And I didn't even realize that they were any different than the rest of us, you know, or in anybody's mind until I probably was 12, 13 years old. I mean, you know, the only people of color that we saw growing up in, in southern Lansing, Michigan, the south part of Lansing, were on TV. The milkman was a white guy. The delivery people were white people. The mailman was a, was a white guy. The, and, and the non-white people that I saw on TV as a kid in the 1950s were 100% of the time either portrayed as villains, as bad guys, or as buffoons. And gay people, I mean, you know, we didn't even talk about Liberace's sexuality. No, no. Mom was in the kitchen or pregnant and she knew her place. Not, not so much speaking to my own mother, although you know, in many ways she kind of fell into that. Uh, one white man with a union job could raise a family without debt beyond a mortgage and a car payment and people of color need not apply for that particular part of the American dream. This is the straight white world that today's GOP wants to take America back to. They're all but shouting it with their make America great again rhetoric. You know, when, it's not a coincidence, for example, when the family of Dr. Seuss pulled six of his books out of print, that those were the only six of his books that had these horrible racist st stereotypes in them. And it's no coincidence that when that happened, the Republicans went nuts. What, you're gonna get rid of racist stereotypes? Can't do that. I mean, when, when I studied American history in elementary school back in the 1950s, I learned that Christopher Columbus was a great man, you know, who, who defied the conventional wisdom that there were monsters at the edge of the earth and set off to find a new golden land for white people to occupy. Right. Yesterday, somebody called into the program to say how pissed off she was when she went to college back in the 60s and discovered that Christopher Columbus was actually, you know, a slaver, a... a, a, a a child trafficker and a rapist. We also learned in the 50s in school that the slave masters, particularly our founding fathers, were really, really nice and thoughtful people who took good care of the poor, uneducated, primitive folks that they had under their care. Right? To this day, there are still some textbooks in America that emphasize how slaveholding white people generously provided not only housing, food, and clothing, but medical care for their charges. Republicans today want to go back 
to that type of history lesson for their children. They dress it all up with fancy language about critical race theory. But the bottom line is, they don't want their kids to grow up knowing that black people and people of all races are just like all the rest of us, are just like white people. It, it, the difference is the pigment in their skin, and that's it. They don't want their children to know that. They want them to think that race defines some huge category of otherness. You know, after the Brown v. Board decision, you, you had one Virginia county that went five years without a public school opening. When these people are talking about critical race theory, what they're really saying is they want to resegregate our schools. And after 54, there was this explosion of religious schools and private academies. And, you know, this continued right up through Betsy DeVos being Secretary of Education. Let's promote these basically white-only uh, schools. And by the way, American schools today are more racially segregated than they were in 1968, which is pretty shocking when you consider it. This is how Republican white supremacists think. And if it sounds outrageous, you know, that, that their, their idea that, you know, the white children should be taught that this country is for white people and, you know, it's Anglo-Saxon and it's all Christian and all that sort of thing. And that everybody who's not white whether it's Native Americans who we slaughtered or African Americans who were brought over in chains or Mexicans whose land we also stole or Asians who we excluded from immigration, that they're basically subhuman. That's the message of the GOP. You know, the news media sanitized the Virginia election. They said that uh, Republican Youngkin won on education issues. That's patently false. He won on racism. And it's damn well time that the media start pointing this out. It took them three years to start calling Trump's lies lies. When are they going to start calling the Republican Party racism racism? I mean, this is, this is not ancient history. We don't have to go back to 1619 or 1776 or 1861 to talk about this. When I was a kid, Richard and Mildred Loving were rousted from their wedding bed, literally their honeymoon by police for the crime of getting married. He was white, she was black. They were sentenced to a year in prison. That conviction was overturned and, and uh, interracial marriage was legalized in the United States in 19 frigging 67. In 19, and, and you know, race has also always permeated politics. And what's at the core of politics? Voting. I went off on this yesterday, I believe. In 1993, there wasn't a single state in the union that required ID to vote. You had to show ID when you registered to vote, and then you put your signature on file. And when you came to vote, you would sign the paper, and they would compare the signatures. And that's, by the way, the most secure way to do it, because you can't fake a signature, especially when somebody's watching you do it. You can get a fake ID for 50 bucks, but you can't fake a signature. But then in 1993, the, the Motor Voter Act passed, Democrats pushed this through Congress, that said that states could sign people up to vote at the same time they signed them up for their driver's license. The Republicans went nuts, saying, oh, all these brown people, these illegals from Mexico are going to start voting now that they've got their driver's licenses. No, it never happened. They never showed up. But you've got, you know, uh, 40 states now that require ID or more that require ID to vote. You know, just laying layers of difficulty on top of the voting. And, you know, Republicans are using this political power that they get from skewing elections this way to, uh, you know, try to promote this whole, this whole, uh, ra the, the racial stereotypes that they are so in love with. And, and, and the, here's the thing. A Democrat has not won the white vote in the United States for president of the United States since Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson was the last Democrat who won the white vote in America, something that's very rarely discussed. Carter lost the white vote, Clinton lost the white vote, Obama and Biden all lost the white vote in America. This is referred to as the Southern strategy. This was what Richard Nixon rolled out in 1968. And it's becoming increasingly obvious that, you know, this, this is their goal. This is, you know, is, is to 
tear America apart along the lines of race and use that to win elections, period. And, it's, and, it's, and, and, and it even goes beyond that. I mean, here in Oregon, we had five counties that just voted to join Idaho because they're rural, almost entirely, and I'm probably in some cases, entirely white counties, so-called red counties, Trump counties. And, you know, they want to join, join Idaho, leave Oregon. Oh, we're going we to leave those liberals. It's not going to work, though. America is one country. And, you know, culture is inexorably changing. And the challenge is over this period of time now until a, a re meaningful transition where you've got people like Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to gin up a civil war. You know, there are genuinely patriotic Americans who know that this is one country, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. That our diversity is our strength. And the racist and violence, racism and violence that have become the Republican Party's brand are dying. Now, I realize it seems like they're on the, on the rise and in the media, yeah, and the guys running around with guns, yeah, but... But I think America is, is, is waking up. I think these racist Republicans are outliers. There was a new poll from the Marquette Law School that found only 28% of all Americans think that Donald Trump should run for president in, in three years. Only 28%, although it's a majority, 60% are Republicans. But those racist Republicans are the outliers. If we want democracy and decency to ultimately prevail, we have a hell of a lot of work to do. But don't lose faith. As Winston Churchill said, never give up.